Welcome to more World of Warplanes content from the Noble Q, and in this, the first of two videos about the Dunkirk Heroes Bundle currently available in the Premium Shop, I'm going to talk about the BF109E3 and help you decide whether the bundle is worth it. So let's have a look at how the, the uh, BF109E3 stacks up against the Tech Tree counterpart, the BF109E Emil. For the purposes of the comparison, I put both aircraft into their stock configuration, I took off all the equipment, and I put in untrained pilots. Because the E3 is a premium aircraft, it only has top modules, therefore I selected the top modules on the E Emil. The Tech Tree aircraft is in columns C and D, and the E3 is in columns E and F. Now all the information you can see here is available in game, but you can only look at one aircraft at a time. It's just easier to look at it side by side in this spreadbook format. In summary, all of the difference, or nearly all of the difference, revolves around the armament. So let's look at that in more detail now. And we can say straight away that the rating for the Emil is 15 and the E3 is only 10. And most of that revolves around the fact that there is a hub mounted cannon on the Emil, the 15mm MG151 slash 15 which does 80 DPS and it's entirely missing from the 109E3. There's also a slight difference in the um, impact of the 20mm cannons which are wing mounted. There's a slightly higher DPS for the Emil and it, they also uh, can hit at a slightly higher range. That's a massive difference. What it means is that the e Emil and certainly this would be true against tier 4 aircraft that it caught unawares, can very nearly act as a boom and zoomer. That is, it can kill aircraft in a single pass. That's not possible with the 109E3. That is a high energy fighter and it will take multiple passes to knock down most aircraft. But there's a more subtle difference here. At a distance of 1903 feet, the E3 can only do 2 times 60 DPS. 120. At the same distance, the Emil is doing 214 DPS. So in other words, it's not only about this very big difference in DPS, it's also about where you can apply it. And the Emil can apply most of its DPS at a far greater range than the E3. You have to get up close and personal with the E3 to do the maximum amount of damage. And even then, it's lagging way behind the E Emil. As for the other main attributes, they're pretty similar. There are some small differences. In airspeed you can see that the cruise speed is actually slightly higher for the E3. I guess that reflects the fact that it hasn't got the weight of this cannon. But the boost speed, the maximum boost speed, is actually slightly lower. And that's because, not shown here, the top engine on the E Emil is actually slightly better than that for the E3. And that's also re reflected in climb rate. 375 for the BF109E Emil and only 364 for the E3. But as you can see, the major difference is in the armament and it completely changes the characteristic of the plane. The E Emil, as I mentioned just a few moments ago, is certainly close to being a boom and zoomer. The E3 is nowhere close to being that. It's a, it's a high energy fighter. Now, I should point out, many of these figures can be affected for the good by an astute choice of equipment, consumables, and a well-trained pilot. And certainly both my E Emil and E3 in my hangar are significantly better than these figures. But once you start including equipment and consumables and pilot skills in the comparison, it quickly becomes very difficult to sort out what is the base aircraft and what is the contribution from the pilot and the equipment. So I'm not going to do that. So that's the E3 on paper, but what's it like in my hangar? Well, I've built the E3 as a turn fighter, which means I have a lightweight wing frame and a lightweight power unit on it. An equally valid build would be to make it a pure high energy fighter, in which case you'd probably drop the lightweight wing frame in favour of polished skin and the lightweight power unit in favour of a combined injection boost system. You can see that the figures here are a little bit different from the ones that I showed you on the spreadsheet a few moments ago, 
principally the airspeed is much greater at 47, it was 40. The maneuverability is a lot better at 80, it was 68. But the survivability is down by one point. Now, an important part of the bundle for this aircraft is, of course, the special pilot, Hans Weber. So let's take a quick look at him now. Hans Weber has special skills. This one, the BF 109 E3 Master, increases airspeed and damage by 10%, and it only takes effect on the BF 109 E3. Remember that if you move this pilot elsewhere, because this becomes a dead slot. The other skill is nosedive, and that increases damage by 10% and the chance of setting an enemy aircraft on fire and causing critical damage by 50% when firing with your guns. There are only forward firing weapons on this uh, plane. And it takes effect when the aircraft speed approaches maximum dive speed and pitch angle exceeds 45 degrees. Well, that's useful if you're in a dive, but the situations in battles are such that you can never always be in a dive. So this skill is nice to have, but it won't apply throughout a battle. So here we are on the Scorching Sands map. It's the invasion variant. There are five sectors laid out in the five spots of a die shape. There's a central garrison flanked by two repair air bases and two further garrisons. Strategically, the air bases are the most important. Not only do they confer the standard three resources every five seconds, but they have three other characteristics. They can be a spawn point. They can allow you to select a new aircraft of the same tier if you want to change mid-battle, only after you've been de destroyed, of course. Or it allows your aircraft to be fully repaired, unlike the field repairs, which only ever repair part of your aircraft. Tactically, the central garrison is the gateway to all other sectors, which makes it important. And the other two garrisons are make weights and only become important where a battle is close and they tip the advantage to one team or the other. If we take a look at the order of battle, we can see that I'm top tier in my BF-109 E3. We have a Junkers 88A bomber and a rather handy XFL-1 with a nasty 37mm cannon in the hub. And we have four players in tier 4 aircraft, an I-17, an AR-2 bomber, an AR-197 multi-roll and an HE-112H2 bomber. Lots of bombers. And these are all good aircraft. On the enemy team there's a P-40, also a splendid aircraft. What I take to be a World of Tanks player, M46 pattern with 105mm howitzer or gun, in a Focke Wolf 190A1, a PE-2 bomber, four air players in tier 4 aircraft, an F-2A, which sadly is not very good, a BF-109B, another Heinkel 112H2, and a Blenheim F, which is specialised. It's quite an interesting matchup, and we'll see how this one develops. So, on this map, nine times out of ten, after taking the garrison in front of me, I'll swing to the west or the right to try and take the airfield there, and from there I'll then go into the middle to try and either take or seize that sector. So we'll see how this pans out. Uh, I did have the option of going up with the heavies, but in this particular case I set about uh, one of the air defence boomerangs, and because I have a turn build I immediately t chase him. Had it been a high energy fighter build I would have continued flying and then come back when I had sufficient distance to be able to complete a turn. And having disposed of the boomerang we have the garrison, which we're first to get. I ping the airfield and off we go. I'm gaining altitude, bearing in mind that uh, this plane is good at dive attacks because of the attributes conferred by its special pilot Hans Weber, so altitude will always be your friend. I look up towards the air defence heavies. They're flying away from me. The fighters are below me. There's one in a low energy configuration. And I shoot it down. I swing around to engage the other fighters. Find another one that's nearly stalled out. And by killing that, we take the airfield. But now we're two sectors uh, each, and the enemy has taken the tactically important central garrison. 
it's a good habit to pick up repairs. I wasn't particularly damaged there. But why take less health than you um, can have to any particular uh, sector? So flying into the central sector, I'm scanning for targets. And I decide that the BF-109B is my target of choice. I know he can't outmaneuver me. I speed in, begin to punch holes in him with my 180 uh, DPS. Flip over, look for him again. Unfortunately put him down. And it's a hot battle here, there's an awful lot of red things. Put some shots into the F2A, swing round. Lose my engine, put it straight back in, and immediately get shot down by the P40. So, just before getting shot down, my team, with my help I guess, had secured the central garrison. It's important to try and keep that, so I'm heading back there. There's a target of opportunity, the XP44, so I dispose of that on the way. see what I think is a hurricane coming towards me. I decide not to go head on with that. I can easily outmaneuver it with this build. I do so and begin to work it over. And down he goes. Now we've lost our local garrison which is a, a little bit surprising and disturbing. I think about heading towards uh, the enemy's local garrison. Tit for tat was in my mind. I see the BF-109B again. He's not paying me any attention because he's trying to shoot down the uh, our heavy. And I begin to work him over as well, and down he goes a second time. It's very important not to get tunnel vision when you're trying to shoot down a, an aircraft, and that's hard. The only way of doing it is not to spend too long on the tail of an aircraft. And you will see me from time to time, particularly in furballs, I will shoot at an aircraft and I will have an opportunity to kill it, but I'm concerned about being jumped on by uh, an enemy aircraft, so I will break off and engage elsewhere if I have to, or re-engage my original target if that's possible. So we swapped local garrisons now. I've shot down the Fokker Wolf and I'm scanning for further targets in this tactically important garrison. And again, I choose not to go head on with the hurricane. Swing round, easily outmaneuvering the hurricane with my build, and down he goes. I dive on the ground attacker. This wasn't a steep enough dive to activate my skill. And as I've said previously, I believe, it is pretty hard to get that skill to activate. And when you do activate it, you're in such a steep dive and going so fast, it's very easy to miss your target. And this is a close battle. We're constantly swapping sectors. So first one team is 3-2 up, and then the other. I help chase down the Blend MF. I hope I wasn't shooting at my own heavy there. I might have been. Evade and swing around behind the enemy aircraft. And he very kindly dives into the floor for me. Although I didn't get the kill, I think. Oh no, I did get the kill. Well, that was kind of him to donate his hit points in that fashion. Message to M46 Pattern. The F Fokker Wolf 190 is not a tank. And now my team is beginning to establish the upper hand. I go looking for opportunities at the edge of the sector. I find one. That's the Blen MF. I spiral and look for the Hurricane. The hurricane is busy with something else, which is what I like. That gives me the opportunity to put him down.
spin back towards the center to see if there's work there that needs doing. There's certainly a ground attacker down below. Big HP pool, so I start shooting him. Take off a third of its health, swing over. My familiar pattern for attacking ground attackers, trying to get her above them and shoot them in their weaker top sections and also avoid bomb traps. I get 75 assistance for that, I didn't actually kill it, so I swing around looking for further targets. I do believe one of my own team was shooting at me there. Fortunately he stops doing it, so I forget all about it very quickly and start working over the LB show. And that is my kill. The F2A flies underneath me. I have a quick look ahead of me and then turn to see if I can put more into the F2A. And here's our friend in the Focke Wolf again. And the XFL1 with his 37mm cannon is doing sterling work alongside me. Though I wish he was doing his work somewhere else and I could get a bigger score. No, there is a good point here. Personally, I do not mind who gets the kills. I do not mind who gets the scores. What I want is for my team to win. Get behind the P40. And that brings us through the Wind Legend, as well as a measure of revenge for him shooting me down at the start of the battle. And this battle is very nearly finished, and I don't quite get to finish off the Bowfighter defence aircraft. And this isn't too bad a battle for the E3. The armament is not spectacular, so 15,575 personal points is pretty satisfactory. So, taking a look at the results of this battle, we can see in the middle it's a 4 chevron battle, or if you prefer a grade 2 fighter. 152,187 credits all silver, gross, and of that, nearly 51,000 was from the premium account bonus. If we look in the message box, we can see that 925 credits were required for repairs to the aircraft as it was destroyed once. Nothing for consumables as I used them prepaid. Experience 3,166 with the premium account bonus and 158 free experience also with the bonus. No tokens on this occasion, but a notable medal in the form of a winged legend. If we look at the personal score tab, we can see that, uh, just quickly opening up the box, we got 12 points and you need 13 for a Hero of the Sky Badge. None of the class-specific missions were completed. We can see that uh, we were one short on destroying aircraft when defending, a little bit further away with the aerial targets, and the capture points um, also a little way away. But one more uh, aircraft there, and the Hero of the Sky Badge would have come. 15,575 personal points, four sectors captured, showing that I put the aircraft about a bit in that battle, 14 uh, aerial targets destroyed, 3,337 3, damage to aerial targets, 24 critical hits. With the armament on this plane, that's not too bad. Destroyed once, capture points, 520, and they were split, uh, 280 for defending and 240 for attacking. On the team score tab, we can see that was enough for first place on the team, both by damage and by chevrons. Good contribution from the XFL1 and some useful contributions uh, on the enemy team as well. So now we have to address the question of whether the BF109E3 is worth it. Well, we saw in the spreadsheet that in its stock configuration, the aircraft, it, certainly in terms of its armament, is far inferior to its tech tree counterpart, the BF109E Emil. Does the addition of good equipment and the special pilot Hans Weber compensate for this? Well, one of the skills that Hans Weber brings is the nosedive skill, and in my opinion, you'll be lucky to activate that once, twice, three times a battle, so that doesn't really figure. The other skill, the master skill, increases the damage output by 10%, but that still doesn't bring it anywhere near uh, the same potency level as the BF109E Emil. Straightforwardly, the Tech Tree aircraft is far better than this one. And if this was in a bundle on its own, I'd be saying to you there are better tier, tier 5 premiums you can spend your money on and I wouldn't recommend it. 
However, it comes in a bundle with a Spitfire Mark 1A. And then the question becomes, is that aircraft so good that it's worth the bundle and having this as a make weight? Well, you'll have to wait until my next video on the Dunkirk Heroes bundle to find out. I hope you found something of interest in this video, and if you did, that you'll come back and see my future content. But until then, this is the Noble Q, aka Royal Flying Corps, signing out.